so yesterday we went over the number lines showing the solution sets <clears throat> being divided into three distinct regions uh, by the points negative five and negative three. That was in our first example. Those points that we had where it stops are called the critical values. By solving or finding the critical values, you can solve quadratic inequalities algebraically, which means we wouldn't have to graph them. I can tell that uh, some of you are getting confused about where the graphs are greater than and less than, and this might help clear that up by solving algebraically. Example three. Now we're going to solve quadratic equations by using algebra. So here's our problem. Solving the inequality x squared minus 10x plus 18 less than or equal to negative 3 by using algebra. So first, step one is to write the related equation. The related equation, you'll notice, is the same exact thing, except that <clears throat> we have an 18 equals, so it's x squared minus 10x plus 18 equals negative 3 instead of being less than or equal to. Next, we're just going to solve the equation for x to find the critical values. So what that means is I need to get the set equal to 0, which means I need to get the 3 on the other side. So we're going to do x squared minus 10x plus 18 equals negative 3. I'm going to get the 3 over to the other side by adding it. gives me 0 on this side, and then x squared minus 10x plus 21. Once I have that, I can use uh, whichever uh, method to solve this that I want. I can first try to factor it out. So what multi gives, multiplies to give me 21 and adds to negative 10. I have x times x to get x squared, and then list the factors of 21, be 7 and 3, that add to negative 10, so be negative 7, negative 3. Break each of these apart and set them equal to 0. It gives me x equals 7 and x equals 3. Those are my critical values. Now, just because it's been a while since we've learned all these different techniques, I think I'm going to give you another method. We'll group all this together and make it smaller. Again, just to give us another method here, we have x squared minus 10x plus 18 equals negative 3. I could complete the square to solve this, which means subtract the 18 over to the other side. Gives me x squared minus 10x, leave a space, equals negative 21. Now I do negative 10 divided by 2 squared. That gives me negative 5 squared. So this becomes a plus 25. Whatever I add to one side, I add to the other side. So plus 25 over here as well. Remember that whenever we're doing this, whatever we got inside of here before we squared it goes down. So it's x minus 5 squared equals 4. Now I take the square root of both sides. It gives me x minus 5 equals plus or minus 2. Add the 5 over. x equals 5 plus or minus 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 minus 2 is 3. 
So I get the same thing, x equals 7 or x equals 3. So we could complete the square to solve. I could also use the quadratic formula to solve. So that's factoring, completing the square. Quadratic formula would do the same thing. x squared minus 10x plus 18 equals negative 3. If I'm doing the quadratic formula, I need this equal to 0. So I'm going to add the 3 over x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. Negative b, that's negative of a negative 10. So it's positive 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared. It's negative 10 squared, which is 100, minus 4ac. 4 times 1 times 21. All over 2a. a is 1, so it's 2 times 1. That gives me 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 84 over 2. 100 minus 84 is 16. 10 plus or minus the square root of 16 over 2. That gives me 10 plus or minus 4 over 2. 10 plus 4 is 17, or is, sorry, 10 plus 4 is 14 over 2 is 7. 14 divided by 2 is 7, so that's x equals 7. 10 minus 4 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. No matter what method I use, I come up with the same two critical values. x equals 7, x equals 3. Sometimes it's going to be easier to factor, like in this one. Sometimes it'll be easier to complete the square. Sometimes it'll be easier to use the quadratic formula. In some cases, I'm going to tell you which one to use. And I'll generally base that on whichever one PhotoMath does. I'll use a different one, especially on your quizzes and tests, so that I know you're using the method I need you to and not using PhotoMath. PhotoMath is leading you astray on many of these problems. It doesn't know what you're doing. By the way, this is 7 and 3. I think I wrote 7 even though I said 3. Okay, so we found all those critical values. Now we kind of set up a fake number line here. So I'm just going to draw a line and think about each interval. I have 3, which is a critical point, and 7, which is a critical point. Now I pick a number less than 3. So I'm going to pick 0. Pick a number between 3 and 7. I'm going to pick 5. And pick a number greater than 7. I'm going to pick 10. Now once I've done that, these are points I'm going to plug in to my original equation to see if it's true or not. So my original equation was x squared minus 10x plus 18 less than or equal to negative 3. So now I'm plugging each one of these x values in to my function. f of 0. Everywhere there's an x, I replace it with a 0. 0 squared minus 10 times 0. I could do that better. Minus 10 times 0 plus 18 less than or equal to negative 3. If this is true, then I know it's true on this interval less than 3. I even make these lines bigger so I know that these are my interval points or my critical points. <clears throat> 
So I'm going to check this and see if it's true. 0 squared is 0. 10 times 0 is 0. Plus 18. Less than or equal to negative 3. Is 18 less than or equal, equal to negative 3? No. So it's not true. Which means that it's not true on this interval. Now plug 5 in. And for 5, it gives me 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus 18 less than or equal to negative 3. 5 squared is 25. 5 times 10 is 50 plus 18. Twenty-five minus fifty is negative twenty-five. Negative twenty-five plus eighteen is negative seven. Is negative seven less than or equal to negative three? Yes. So since it's less than or equal to, it is true for this interval. Now we check the last interval by plugging a ten in f of 10, that's 10 squared minus 10 times 10 plus 18 less than or equal to negative 3. 10 squared is 100, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 minus 100 is 0. 0 plus 18 is 18. Is 18 less than or equal to negative 3? No. So it's not true on this interval. That tells me that my interval where this is true is between 3 and 7 because it worked for the number that's in between 3 and 7 and created a true answer. So this, since this is true on this interval, our interval here would be from 3 to 7. And that's our answer. Uh, I think it's going to go into, yes, it's going to go into brackets because it's a less than or equal to. So let's make sure we put brackets around this and not parentheses. Brackets. And we're done. This was not how long each of these problems should take you. you. Choose whichever one of these methods you want. You don't have to do all three, obviously. All right, let's try to solve this inequality by using algebra. First, I'm going to write the related equation, which just means make this an equal sign. Each one of these steps should be listed out on your homework assignments. So x squared minus 6x plus 10 equals 2. Now I'm going to subtract the 2 over. Step 2 being solve the equation for x to find the critical values. I'm going to take my equation and subtract the 2 over. Gives me x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals zero. I can factor this. Four times two gives me eight. I need to get a negative six. Four plus two would give me a positive six. Negative four times negative two gives me positive eight. And negative four minus two gives me six, negative six. So I can factor this out to x minus four and x minus two. Now find my critical values, x minus 4 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. I have x equals 4 and x equals 2. Now I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to put 4 and 2 on there. I'm going to make it a big line 
so I know that those are my interval points, 2 and 4. What's the number below 2? Don't want to make that one so big. I'm going to plug a 0 in, because 0 is smaller than 2. A number between 2 and 4, I could choose any decimal, but 3 is the logical choice. And a number bigger than 4 would be 5. Test each x value in the interval. I'm going to plug those into the equation. My original was this all being greater than or equal to 2. So I go back to the original equation. x squared minus 6x plus 10 greater than or equal to 2. And I plug each one of these numbers in f of 0, a number smaller than 2. 0 squared is 0, minus 6 times 0, plus 10, is greater than or equal to 2. 0 minus 6 times 0, that's 0. 6 times 0 is 0, so that's 0 minus 0, plus 10. You should be able to look at this and tell that the left side is 10. 10 is greater than or equal to true to 2, so this is true. Plug in my next number, 3. f of 3 equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 10. Is that greater than or equal to 2? 3 squared is 9. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 10. 9 minus 18 is negative 9, plus 10 is 1. Is 1 greater than or equal to 2? No. So it doesn't work for that interval. Plug in my next number, 5. 5 squared minus 6 times 5, plus 10, greater than or equal to 2. 5 squared is 25, 6 times 5 is 30, 25 minus 30 is negative 5, negative 5 plus 10 is 5, 5 is greater than or equal to 2, so this one is true. My intervals where this would be true would be from negative infinity or any number less than 2 negative infinity to 2, there was an equal sign, so it's a bracket, union, 4, my critical value, to infinity. And that's it. Final answer right here. Okay, that's where I'm going to stop today. We're going to continue on with this tomorrow. Uh, continue trying algebraic functions. Uh, and just continue uh, working on these, getting a little more practice in. And then you'll have a homework assignment on this tomorrow.